So I'm Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the briefing. I, I sort of want to go at it a different way, which is that I mean, it, it's maybe there are two things going on at once. But I, I just want to, as, as in working on in in, in at least re somewhat related fields, I've seen. I, this is a quick question for Citigroup. Was Citigroup one of the funders of the Dakota Access Pipeline? Because I've seen a, a joint response by corporations that did fund it. It seems I'm not saying it's it's a entirely inconsistent, but I guess I'm wondering, can you speak more generally? Is Citigroup actually moving to, to not fund projects that have to do with not with uh, uh, you know fossil fuels or what, what's the policy on that? And also on, on, on just as to the UN, I wanted to I guess think ask UNEP if it's possible. Whether whether you believe that that old school oil companies should remit, should be part of the UN Global Compact, which is a the UN's kind of uh, uh, some people call it greenwashing, but it says that all of these companies have stood have pledged to to to, to these uh, sustainable principles, and you have companies like there's one called China Energy Fund Committee that has actually is is in court in the Southern District of New York for paying bribes at the UN to buy oil contracts in Uganda and Chad, straight up oil drilling. Uh, and this took place at the UN, and the company is still in the globe, is still in consultative status with ECOSOC. So, is UNEP taking any steps to try to make sure that the UN system at least creates some incentives for for companies to to either go green or maybe get out? That would be my question. Thanks a lot. City is a member of the lending group. We're not quoted an investor. We're a member of the lending group into the pipeline. Um, I can't speak to the details of of how it's being handled, but because uh, I'm not personally involved in it. Uh, but I can say from my knowledge that, that that lending decision had passed every environmental screen uh, before the close. Uh, there was a tremendous effort to make sure it was, it was uh, green-lighted by everybody, and it was. And the, to my knowledge, uh, what I've been informed is the issue of the indigenous people, which we respect tremendously. Um, didn't come up until after the financial closing and beginning of construction. So we were blindsided by it uh, and tried to respond and worked very diligently to try to resolve the issues. And, uh, and uh, it's gone quiet lately, so I can't speak to the status of it. But I just one follow-up on that. I mean, given the areas that it goes through, it seems hard to say that it's a, th Does it say something about the review process, that the idea that this issue would arise was, was a big surprise? I mean, uh, maybe that's Monday morning quarterbacking, but it seems like many people, th it seems, in the future, I guess I'm saying, if you were doing an environmental review, would Citigroup engage in, in reviews that would in, include human rights, indigenous people, and other aspects? Oh, actually, the review did include all those things, and all those things were cleared, including the approval of the indigenous people. Uh, there was no objection during the reviews. So it was, it was uh, environment, safety, human rights, Indigenous people, all these issues get reviewed uh, under a, a guideline called the Equator Principles, which is uh, um, uh, managed out of the IFC, but is really a, a document shared by, I think, about 75 banks around the world. And it's a very rigorous process. We have a staff of three full-time people that do nothing but the Equator Principle reviews and plus these other reviews that we do, human rights and so on. So we, do, we are trying diligently to uh, be responsible in these regards. And, um, and that, that one, I think, surprised everybody after the fact. And all the banks tried to back up and see what we could do. Yeah. And I don't know which of you, maybe. Uh, which, the idea that the UN, whether it's through the Global Compact or in giving consultative uh, or, or supporting consultative status to ECOSOC of essentially, in the case of China Energy Fund Committee, it's, a, it's an oil, it's a straight up oil company that has an NGO that remains consulting ECOSOC on sustainable development. So I guess I'm just wondering, I'm using that as the example because they've been indicted or their founder's been indicted, but what is, U, does UNEP, you know, or UN Environment based in Nairobi, is there some, do you interact with a wider system to try to make sure that, that, that this type of incongruity doesn't doesn't take place, or who is in charge of that? I'm not an expert on the details of the um, uh, incidents that you mentioned, but uh, for as a lead UN agency, uh, UN United Nations Environment Program does recognize the important role of the private sector um, 
in, in, in achieving the sustainable development goals. And we do have a very uh, robust partnership with lead uh, agents in the partner uh, in the private sector in, in trying to seek policy options for the, their involvement in, in achieving environmental protection and sustainable development goals. So that is uh, a policy decision uh, which is uh, taken by member states in the United Nations Environment Assembly, and uh, we are following that. Thank you very much. China Energy Fund Committee that has actually is, is in court in the Southern District of New York for paying bribes at the UN to buy oil contracts in Uganda and Chad, straight up oil drilling. Uh, and this took place at the UN and the company is still in, in consultative status with ECOSOC. So what is, does UNEP, you know, or UN Environment, based in Nairobi, is there some, do you interact with the wider system to try to make sure that, that, that this type of incongruity doesn't, doesn't take place? Or who is in charge of that? I'm not an expert on the details of the uh, uh, incident that you mentioned, but uh, for as a lead UN agency, uh, UN United Nations Environment Program does recognize the important role of the private sector um, in, in, in achieving sustainable development goals. And we do have a very uh, robust partnership with lead uh, agents in the, partner, uh, in the private sector in, in trying to seek policy options for their involvement in, in achieving environmental protection and sustainable development goals. So that is a policy decision uh, which is uh, taken by member states in the United Nations Environment Assembly and uh, we are following that. Thank you very much. A two person press conference in a place with 200 journalists <laughs> with full access. The city press does, but for its troubles, evicted. Let's go back to, of course, what about China Energy Fund Committee that paid bribes to do drilling, to buy oil contracts from a president of the General Assembly in Uganda? Well, I'm not aware of the details of your question, sir, but um, uh, we work with the private sector. Oh, yeah, you do work with the private sector. Private sector has been indicted for paying bribes right in these halls, right on the second floor, that we can no longer go to because we were evicted and remain restricted for covering the corruption of the United Nations. Of course, if we didn't go in at all, look at all the empty chairs. 